Welcome everybody to another YouTube video of mine. Today I kind of um, wanted to talk a little bit about um, how to become a better football or soccer player, whatever you call it in your country. Um, I see a lot of tutorials on, on how to do tricks, how to do moves, and things like that. And when I go through those comment sections, um, you know, I always see the a lot of the same questions, such as how can I be more confident? How can, you know, um, they always have different suggestions, let's put it that way. And then even um, somebody who comes in on one of my videos wanted me to do some like training tutorials or videos like that, you know, wearing my shoes and, and, and stuff like that. And I might do those in the future um, just because, you know, someone asked and it might be something that um, people want to see. But today I kind of want to talk a little bit about my opinion on how to become you know, a better soccer player or footballer. Um, now, let me, from my perspective, from my point of view, and this could be just me, I could be totally wrong, and there's nothing wrong with that, um, but I feel, you know, it, once you hit a certain age, you are pretty much the same footballer, soccer player that you're gonna be for the remainder of your career. You may be able to learn some tricks, um, you may be able to, um, develop some things here and there that you didn't do when you were little but for the most part the type of player that you are growing up you're probably gonna continue to um, be that same type of player and for me I think that's more important though that's the that's the most important thing that you can do is find out what type of player you are what type of player you can be and strive for that a lot of people you know want to be somebody different somebody that they're not they want to try to emulate certain players and there's nothing wrong with that but for instance not everybody can be messy not everybody can be as quick as him not everybody can be as strong as Cristiano Ronaldo not everybody can try to out dribble like Neymar you may be able to include some of the things that they do in you know what you do but for the most part let's be realistic you know you probably won't ever achieve that status. That doesn't mean you can't be a great player or a good player. I'm simply saying that, you know, for the for like the question how to say how to be more confident. Well, that just comes down to knowing your your um, how do I want to call it? Knowing your limitations and expanding on what you you can do well. Knowing your limitations and working on those. Um, a lot of people, for instance, I'm I play with the player who doesn't want to use his left foot. And I am tired of encouraging him, work on your left foot, work on your left foot. Another player has a has a hard time, like when they clear the ball, they just kick it out of bounds. It doesn't matter what they do instead of keeping it in bounds. Those little things like that, you know, matter in a game or can, you know, make or break your game. It can really help you out. You know, you know, a lot of things is first touch. I feel Maybe it's just a generational thing, but I feel like nowadays we want to worry about oh, all the tricks and looking good and, and doing that. But um, to me, there's just so much more that you can put into your game that will make you a much better player than going out and practicing moves or, or over and over. So talking about that, uh, you know, those tutorials, they're great. And I watch them too, not for the reasons that to learn the moves, but it's just something that because... I feel like when you're when you're a player, things just happen, you know, in your mind. Once, you know, when you're in the flow of the game, you just do stuff based off your mind, you know, how sharp you are. And that's really what it comes down to. When you practice those moves, you're not practicing them because you're going to intentionally or say, I'm going to do this move right here. Now, all that matters is the defense, what they're doing, how many people are guarding you, stuff like that. So you... To say that you're going to work on a move to pull it off, eh, I, I don't really like that. But I do will say that to have it ready, so when your mind, when if you done if you do something enough, then you'll be able to do it. So that's the important thing. Practice the moves, but get so used to it that it becomes second nature. When you're having to think about something so much, I don't feel it, it'll be as effective. If I, if I have to think about, okay, do a step over, do a step over, turn here, turn out. You know, it all has to come second nature to you. And it has to, you know, just be, um, what's the word? It just has to come natural, I guess. 
um, where you don't have to really think about it. And once you get to that level, it's then then um, you you can say that you incorporated that skill into your arsenal. Um, but so if we talk about training, you know, practicing moves, obviously conditioning is always a huge thing. The next thing is, I would say, is pick a position. You know, I get it that you got to be, you know, the coach might ask you if you're in high school, a coach might say, hey, I need you at defense. I need you at forward and midfield and you need to jump in and you need to do it because you want to just prove to them. But, you know, if you know your position, know what you want to play, know what you can play, um, I feel that just benefits you because then, you know, you can't be guided a certain way if you know you're good over here. Now, that's not saying that you shouldn't try to play those positions, but, you know, maybe a coach tells you, hey, can you go play defense? You know, growing up, I always hear the, 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 the case of, whoa, well, no, I've never played in that position before. Um, that's my next thing. You should learn the roles of each position. You know what a defender does. They're going to, you know, stop the attackers, play their position, support the midfield, you know, sometimes make overlapping runs, you know. Uh, midfielders, they control the middle. They're up and down, coming back and forth. Center mids, you got your center defensive mids who are going to play right in front of the uh, fullbacks, stuff like that. And then, you know, you have your center mids who are, are going up with the forwards, and then you have your wingers on the outside going up. Then you have your forwards. Their job, now for me, for me, maybe because I'm not paying people millions on my team or I'm not getting paid millions, but to me, a forward doesn't necessarily have to score. You have... A magnitude of different type of forwards you know you got the target man that you can hit the ball up he's going to hold it off and let your team come help you have your goal scorers who are purposely just going to try to score um and then you know you have your your out your forwards that play out more almost like wingers who are going to attack and get crosses in to their target center man or whatever like that um so my point is like you know experiment figure out what you can play what you want to play um, and then once you know that, um, then I feel you can be more confident and that's how you'll get confidence because you know yourself, you know what you're able to do. Um, and, and you know, who can tell you otherwise, only you can bring yourself down and only you can bring yourself up. Um, if you have someone who doesn't think that you're that good, prove them wrong, show them, you know, um, don't let someone else decide your fate or or control your game um one of the important things that i like to remember is like when you have the ball you have control of everything when you have the ball everything is centered around you for that little moment and that's fun to think about like if you have the ball all eyes are on you everybody is fixated on you you have control of what to do what happens next and that's a fun thing i think you know putting yourself in that situation you know taking on that pressure um so um, those are the things that I say to work on. Another big thing that I say to work on and I think is critical, like I said, they have tutorials on moves. We watch those. Those are great. They're very helpful for people. I think people do learn from those, but you, they never tackle the real issue. And the real point is that I'm going to say, and, and I mean this very, very much. Hold on. Let me get something for this. Okay. So. Uh, right here, I have the soccer, a soccer board, football board, whatever you want to call it. And why I have this here? Because I want to make a point that before you, before you step on the field or before you decide your position, learn the game, learn the game to its fullest. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you're understanding positions, everybody's role on the field that you can play. That's gonna make you a way better soccer player. There's several people that I play with that have all the ability in the world, have a whole bunch of skill. They're fast or they may be strong, but what's they, they don't get set apart because their knowledge of the game, their mind is not there. And I say that with all sincerity. To me, I would rather play with someone who doesn't have that much skill, but is so smart of the game. And I know that if you play soccer or you play football, you've played with an old guy, a guy that's out of shape somewhere who's 
who's fat. And, and he just has amazing, amazing touch on the ball. He can pass the ball. He's just in the right spots. And that's how, you know, these, these great players, um, such as Andrea Pirlo comes to mind, you know, Iniesta. These players, they don't, you won't ever see their age on the field because they're so smart. They're so technical. They work on the little things. They're not worried about scoring goals. Um, they're worried about where the position is, where they need to be, their control of the ball, and they can control the whole game just with the ball at their feet. And, you know, Iniesta is great at, um, you know, doing moves, and sometimes they'll get the occasional goal here and there. But you look at someone like Pirlo who's just, you know, like a fine wine. He gets better. He got better with age. And, I mean, I've had to mold my game in that way. Of course, I'm not comparing myself to them. But that's when I step on the field, that's my mentality. Like, you know, you may be able to outrun me. You may be able to be stronger than me. But you're not going to, you know, I'm going to know more about the game. I'm going to be thinking more than you. And sometimes when you think faster than your opponent, that's what, you know, it benefits you. So when you learn the game, you know, how many times have you been with somebody I and mean, you guys are watching a game and, and that person is yelling out commands and, the, you know, what the pros teams or whoever they're watching should be doing. But yet they get on the field and they don't they don't really do that. So that's such an important aspect to your game to add. Like if you can think two or three steps ahead, you know, you're already there. Like that means that when the ball's coming at you, whether you decide to hold it or you decide to one touch it, like you know what you're going to do even before that ball comes. And, you know, that's that's the beauty of a Barcelona team where, you know, they had a system where um, someone got the ball, everybody else knew what to do around them. And that just makes the job easier. You know, I feel like with my team, for instance, we try to rely on one person too much. We want one person that's going to go up and score and, and, and dribble through, you know, eight players by themselves. And that's not realistic, you know, and I try to stress so much, you know, let's get off the ball movement. Let's be in the right places. You should be here. You should be there. You know, the X's and O's of the game. And that's that's my main thing that I tell everybody. It's good to know moves. It's good to learn tricks. It's good that 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 makes you awesome if you can do that. If you're if you can run up and down the field and you're fast, think about it. If you're not if you don't have no intelligence of the game, how far is that going to take you? Because skill can only take you so far. You know, that you know, and that's why longevity, if you want to play for a long time, and if you just want to, you know, set yourself apart, the best thing you can do is just to learn the game do all the tricks practice those but you know it's not going to help you if you know you don't learn the game you don't understand your role because i guarantee you know i've coached on different levels and i guarantee i'm going to pick the guy who can be in the right spots he doesn't have to be the fastest he doesn't have to have the strongest kick it's just about where you're going to be if you're going to be in the right spots at the right moment you know you can see that you can notice that you can notice the players who are thinking on the field and and can pick their spots and know exactly where to be. And those are the ones that get lucky. Those are the ones that get the rebounds, you know, to take shots. They're the ones that can deflect passes and get in the way of passing lanes, stuff like that, just because their knowledge of the game is so high. IQ is is such a great thing to have. And and that makes me more confident. I, I don't want to rely on my skill. I don't really I don't want to rely if I can kick a ball hard or far. I don't want to rely on my speed because we all lose that. You know. As you're getting older, you're just fighting time. That's essentially what it is. No matter how hard you work out, at a certain point, once you're almost 30, it starts declining. It may not decline fast, depending on what you, you know, do. But, but time tells us we can't we can't defeat Father Time. And um, at a certain point, it just goes down. You start up, you start working out, then you maintain that, and then you just start going down. Sadly. You know, I wish that wasn't true, but that, that happens to all of us. So um, the way to to still be able to be effective, still still be able to, you know, not care about that stuff is, is just learning the game and, and learning everything about it. You know, become obsessed with it. Watch games. You know, I recommend it to my friend who has trouble, you know, understanding the X's and O's of the game. And I'm always yelling at him, um, you know, for certain things. And... And they get so frustrated with me because I see it. I can see certain things on the field that he doesn't. So it's a little frustrating in that regard. But you can really tell when you play with someone who's, you know, that's when you can, you know, make combinations with players when you guys know the game. 
and that's so important. I will not stress that enough. So important. Um, keep keep. You know, I recommended. I was I was going back to my point. I recommended him to to play some FIFA, get down the controller, and play FIFA. And I challenged him. I said, I see you on the field. You want to just kick the ball, or you just want to try to go, you know, f you know, full speed with it, or you want to stand still and then they steal it from you, or you're not in the right spots where you're supposed to be. I'm like, how are you going to play FIFA? And he told me passing the ball around, you know. Doing this and I'm like, that's exactly how we're supposed to play though. So play some FIFA. I'm not saying that it's going to make you a better soccer player on the field because of course it's not going to. But it will make you see the game in a different way. You know, you'll be able to give through balls. You'll see what through balls are. You'll be able to see what runs are. You'll be able to see um, all those little things. So my main, my main thing about this video is just, you know, learn the game. Get some IQ. Um, play the game as if you could not run. What happens if you couldn't run? What happens if you had to walk? That's how you should approach the game. And then when you throw in your skills, if you're fast, it'll be way much easier. Um, so the second thing I would say is the skill I would tell you to pick up on rather than doing skills and all that is just learning how to shield the ball and retain the ball. That is important. Um, if you can do that, I think that is the most beneficial skill that you'll have because you can you have defenders coming at you you can hold them off you can shield it you can and you can do any move from that position you know because sometimes a defender might be physical with you and you ain't going to be able to do no um you know step overs anything like that so if you can shield the ball protect the ball um those things are going to help you so I'm going to end the video here. Um, obviously, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. It, it was done with no bad intent to uh, the YouTubers who make, you know, skill moves. Um, it was just for the people who maybe need a little bit of boost of confidence or not understanding why their game isn't evolving to the next level. So hopefully if you click on this video, it's for that. And hopefully I answered um, any doubts you guys might have had within yourselves and if you have any other questions feel free to email me um, whatever you need comment below if you're going through the same situation or if you have any other questions you might want me to answer um, I'm always here to listen and hopefully you guys enjoyed it like comment subscribe we'll see you guys in the next one peace